What's up guys? Your boy Jab at it again. Now listen, today I'm going to do a very traditional run of this reactor. Meaning, I know I've been all scientific and all that with the past couple of videos, but I'm showing you guys today how I truly run this reactor at heart when nobody's around, when nobody's judging me or looking at me, when I can just have my hair down doing what I want to do. So. I, on top of that, I don't have time today because I need to go somewhere. So I don't. I, I have less than an hour to set this reactor up and get it running before I go. So I don't have time to do all this measuring crap anyway today. So today the real theme is not like any specific type of plastic, but more of my lab waste. So mostly a lot of paper towels and stuff I swept up off the ground and crap. You know, lab waste type stuff, right? But really mostly paper towels and gloves. These are those blue paper towels, so I don't think they're even paper. I think they're like some type of synthetic material. The gloves are nitro. So, I mean, something I do want to highlight in me doing this is one, this reactor. Oh, shit. I just spilled stuff everywhere. What the hell? Yeah, uh, anyways, what I want to highlight is one, this reactor works on all types of organic matter. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what the matter is, right? And for two, for two, it doesn't need to be shredded up. It doesn't need to be for the reactor to still do its work on it. The shredding up is really for the best results and also to increase how much we could put in there, right? The surface area, increase the volume, and the amount of plastic we could put in there for a given volume. So surface area is more for efficiency, but if we're doing just a, a, a traditional run like I am today, obviously I don't care about efficiency. I care about just getting rid of this waste I have in an environmentally friendly way that I can do myself here at home not having to worry about shipping it off to anybody because who knows what somebody's going to do with your waste when you go give it to them because I mean it's waste unless they have something like what I have which can recover the energy and value out of it why would they want to ever do anything respectful to your waste it's not even theirs you know real tall no real limit here on what we're putting in anything and everything and you know my favorite part about when I do stuff like this it's how I still get pretty much the same products. I still get oils. I still get gas. I still get coal. I mean, like, it doesn't matter what I put in there. I always will get the same products. Now, it may not be, like, the same type of oil, the same type of gas, but I'm still getting oil. I'm still getting gas every time, no matter what I put in here. I'm still getting valuable things no matter what. And that's, that's really the main takeaway I want to take from this video. You know, because there's always these questions about what can go in here, what can't. It's not really a matter of that anything can't go in here, but it's a matter of... Do you want a consistent product? Because if you want a consistent product, you, you have to put a consistent product in. If you want a consistent product out, right? Now, if you have means of separating the products after the fact via something like distillation, like what I have set up, then you can really put whatever the hell you want in and get what you want out at the end of the day, right? Because ultimately, I want trash as a whole to be seen differently. You know, I'm not just talking plastic. I'm not just talking, you know non-biodegradable, I'm talking about anything that we normally just throw away in society because we don't really have any other use for it, you know, it, if it's organic, it can be, you know, recovered and that's, that's a period, point blank end of story, it can be recovered and it will be because I'm around, I'm on this earth, so as long as I'm on this earth, best believe, at least my trash is all, all going to be recovered and used for something else, you know. So when I'm doing this my way, I don't give a damn about the catalyst. Put it into the most crude way you can get. I just literally turn the blades on and when it's spinning, I just mix it in. It's like that. I don't give a damn about all that pre-mixing and weighing crap. I mean, if it were up to me, I would never do this science crap. I can't stand being a little science cupcake. But you know, I do it for the love of the craft and for the love of the achievements. Because if it weren't for science, I would never know what the hell I'm doing. And if it weren't for all those research papers of scientists who have done this at a different scale, I would not know where I'm at. So for the love of science and the, the craft and respect, I will continue to always do scientific measurements the best I can. I may not be good at it, but I'm going to do it either way. All right, so we got her on. Skipped all the in-between steps because I didn't feel like recording it. We pushed all the oxygen with Argon. Um, one magnetron on right now. 
We'll turn the next Magnetron when it hits the 5 minute mark and then the third one on when it hits the 10 minute mark. I just do that for safety. So if it explodes, the explosion isn't 3 times as bad as it could be. I'm playing checkers on a chessboard, baby. That's all it is. Alright, one hour in, we are at almost the maximum temperature, 760 degrees Fahrenheit for the body temperature, which equals 406 Celsius for the body temperature, so very hot, just an hour in. We have a full yoga ball already, way more gas production out of literally just trash compared to the styrofoam. You remember, it's styrofoam, five hours it took to just fill up one of these, but trash literally fills up one this quickly we're two hours in the temp seems to have really maxed out around the 790 Fahrenheit slash 230 Celsius range not really getting above that I've been agitating it I can't give a, a consistent amount honestly really just gotta set up an automated switch or whatever to get this thing going like an Arduino or some type of physical switch but look I, I just been agitating it as you see you guys should have seen before I got this motor when I was doing it by hands you know you know, first of all, it took me so long to, to get over the fact that, no, I'm not going to get electrocuted from touching this thing when it's on, for one. And for two, it was just so inconsistent. But hey, you know, we get up to that point. That's all that matters. All right. The run has been a total of 5 hours and 30 minutes. We have consumed 25 kilowatt hours. I have given this reactor overnight to cool down. So let's go ahead and open up the reactor and see what we got inside. When I opened it up, there was a draft of vapors that just shot out at my face. <laughs> okay, so as we can see here, this carbon is at the very end of the reactor, and that was actually something I did on purpose. The last, near the last hour, I pretty much only went for it with the blades because I wanted to see um, what that would do. Now let's go ahead and pour this carbon out. Oh my goodness! Ah! <laughs> Yo! Look at that! Yo! Well, that is a lot! It, there is dust everywhere! Oh my goodness! Bloody hell! Bloody hell, mate! There's dust everywhere! Ah! Bro, it's the days at Nome! It's the days at Nome, mate! The days at Nome! Afghanistan! I've never had the carbon get this dusty in my life. It doesn't show it on the camera, but this whole greenhouse has just carbon dust everywhere. So I have my respirator on, because I personally don't want to breathe all that in, personally. I know that we're carbon based, <laughs> all organic matter is, but I personally don't want my lungs to deal with that. Take a bloody look at that. Whoa! One small step for man. Wow, it's like play sand. This, my friends, is without a doubt the best carbonization we have ever got of any run in any time with any reactor. Any of the reactors I've built. This is the best we've ever gotten. It is so dry and so free of any organic matter that is almost gray, it's not even black, it's almost gray, and just look at how dusty it is, I just touch it, and um, shoot, so it seems like moving the carbon to the end of the chamber near the end done load, and I think that's because, you know, the reactor gets up to like 800 degrees, 430 degrees Celsius, um, in external body temperature. That means the internal body temperature of like the actual plastic and carbon is probably at least a thousand degrees. But that heat is all based on the plastic and the carbon. So when we move it towards the end, that heat all will become, will, will go at the end of the reactor. You know, in the times past when we've opened the reactor, there have been some oils or some unfinished carbon at the very edge of it. That's because most of the heat was still stuck in the back. So moving it nor t near to the end, near the end of the reaction, seems to be the most advantageous thing to do. And on top of that, we can do like smart stuff and just have that end magnetron on once everything's at the end, you know, and not have the rest of them on because obviously nothing's going to be in the back. 
but wow, I just, I have nothing to say, you know, there's something like this, this is like a piece of fiberglass that was, um, a part of the trash that I threw in there, you see, it all gets recovered, um, I just saw some metal, it's copper wires from, um, some type of e-waste I put in there, some type of, oh, and then there's, there are these chunks of carbon like this, which almost are like rocks, I don't really know what exactly forms are kind of porous, um, but they're not like they don't just crumble that easy. Like I can I can break them apart, but they're they're not like so. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's parts like this. You could tell like this. I think just to be a piece of paper towel. Usually parts like this. Oh, that's so satisfying. Oh my goodness. When they just crumble like that. No, there's some black carbon, some gray carbon. The gray carbon clearly is the most um absolutely degraded. But damn, damn, she fine. All right, anyway, let's test the oil. All right, let's see the oil that we get out of this. Holy, this is a lot of oil. I can just feel it. Probably some a lot of water in there since we just put waste. Like, this is almost this whole container filled up here. All right, that measuring cup. Not as much water as I thought. What? Are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me? This is the best oil yield we've gotten. Out of any type of plastic run we've done, the best yields we've gotten has been with just straight up trash and lab waste. Look at how much oil that is. I know that there's going to be some water in there, but dude, that is a good amount of oil. That is at least, I mean like with the water in there, this is already at 500 mil. Over 500 mil. Oh, just under 550. 550 mil pretty much. Well, that is 550. Yeah, that is five. That is 550 mil. How does it smell? It smells like pyrolysis oil. And if you... There's no really other way to describe how it smells, but if you know, you know what that smells like. <laughs> Doesn't smell good, but... Give me a little dish here. Let's fill some up. Put it in there. And let's see how she burns. As you see, when it's kind of separated on its own, it does have like a, like a golden color to it. But that's actually a decent amount of oil, guys. Like, what? Um, I have a plasma arc lighter here. This is going to simulate like a spark plug. So if this can light the fuel, most likely an, a gasoline engine could. Oh, it does not. So that means that this product is more diesel. This is a more diesel-esque, kerosene-esque fraction. Because this is not lighting. Oh, no. well, okay, maybe, maybe I spoke too soon. <laughs> maybe I spoke too soon. Oh, let's try that again. I'm going to put a larger quantity in. I'm outside of the greenhouse now, so I don't contaminate the inside air so bad of there. I'm just going to put a larger amount of this stuff in. Oh, that, that's a whole plate full. This is going to burn for a while. Let's see if we can start it with this now. Now that it's a larger amount. It Look, you saw that. It does not want to start with the plasma arc like that. So clearly there are some diesel fractions in there. You know, it's not just gasoline, not just diesel, but it's a mix. This thing clearly does not fail in the energy density category. That little bit I put in there quite literally burned for about almost five minutes straight. That is crazy. Like, I just kept looking over here and it just kept burning. I didn't even put that much in there. And I think that's because those are the diesel fractions in there. The longer chains, diesel, kerosene, jet fuel fractions. So that, I mean, that type of oil there is my favorite to, to, to distill because we get everything out of it. We get gasoline jet fuel, diesel, all that good stuff. So man, I mean, we're going to have a lot of oil to distill because, you know, every time I do these runs, we're getting good quality oil and we got to do something with it. Last thing I wanted to mention, guys, is I did get um, three yoga balls full of gas, but I did leave one slightly open by accident overnight, so it pretty much deflated completely. But anyway, here's the gas that we collected over the run. Watch.
beautiful flame. I mean, you can't even see it on camera. There's a nice blue definition at the beginning, and then, you know, as it carbonizes a little bit more, it comes out there, but, you know, as I press on it, I can make it come out more or less, more beautiful. I mean, we got three balls of this stuff, technically. <laughs> so I guess, really, for me, it's just two, but I'm going to compress this, so that way we can use this same very gas to distill all of the oil we've been collecting. Anyways, guys, peace out.